All right. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Just want to say happy new year to everyone. This is our our first Thursday Sunday school of the year. And yours truly is here. <laughs> so I'm glad to be here and appreciate the opportunity. Um, before we get started, though, we want to uh, bow our heads for a word of prayer. Got a good lesson tonight, I think. I think uh, it's going to going to help us a little bit. Continue to pray for our Sunday school department, our superintendent. Uh, continue to pray for uh, Evangelist Morrison, who's under the weather tonight. I really appreciate her. God's going to bless her for pressing and seeing that this that this Zoom gets recorded, and um, we appreciate that. I certainly do, I'm sure, as well as others. So let us bow our heads. Dear gracious and eternal Father, Lord, we thank you and we give you praise, O oh God, for yet another day. Lord, we thank you for yet another Sunday school opportunity, O oh God, to be able to learn of God's word and to be able to connect with God's word. Lord, we pray tonight that you would send your anointing, Lord, that you would send the words of life, that it may render unto us, O oh God, um, more life. And Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you would continue to help us as we walk with you and Lord, as we talk with you and give you the glory. Lord, we again continue, uh, we're praying for Evangelist Morrison tonight, asking that you stretch out your healing hand. And Lord, whatever this condition is, Lord, we know by faith tonight that you're able to uh, uh, heal her body. And that is right early, Lord. We ask that you continue to be with us. And remember those who are on the call tonight, Lord. We pray that you continue to make ways and open doors. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. Again, praise the Lord. And I'm going to try to kick this on off. And tonight's lesson, I've got things all over my screen, so I'm having to pop things up and pop things back so that I can get to where I need to go. So the nice lesson is uh, entitled Faith and Righteousness. Faith and Righteousness. Give me one second. And we're going to be coming out of the book of Hebrews tonight, um, chapter 11, uh, verses 1 through Four, seven, eight, seventeen through eighteen, twenty through twenty-three, thirty-two, thirty-nine, and uh, through forty. So, I'm going to go ahead and read the scriptures. Hebrews eleven one through four, and so on. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the words or that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith, Noah being warned of God, things not seen as yet moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. All right, verse 20. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was a, uh, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, 
when he was born was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Verse 32, and what shall I and what shall I more say, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. And, and these all having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise. God having provided some, some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Let us say amen. And as I move forward here just a little, um, I just want to, I want to give, now th this particular uh, passage of scripture gives us the biblical definition of what faith is. And I'm going to first, before doing anything else, I'm going to give the, um, the humanistic definition of what faith is. And according to somebody's dictionary out there, uh, it, it says that faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Um, some of the uh, synonyms that, uh, that we can use with faith or use uh, in um, um, correlation, not correlation, but that are, are used to mean faith um, are words like trust and belief and confidence, conviction, credence. Uh, let's see, reliance is another word. Um, another uh, part of the definition is uh, that faith is a strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof, um, a system of religious belief, et cetera, et cetera, a strongly held belief or theory, if you will. Now, we don't deal with theories when it comes to God because we, because God's word is truth, and that's, that's, what we, that's where we uh, dwell, and that's where we reside. Um, all right, so those are, that's the... Uh, the carnal definition, if you will. But the Bible's definition says in Hebrews 1 that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Um, for by it, the elders obtain a good report. Um, faith uh, is the substance of things hoped for. Whatever whatever it is that that we're in need of, whatever it is that we are believing God for, faith has a way of getting God's attention in as much as it, it triggers reaction from God. Uh, things um, that, um, that are not seen or evidence of things um, not seen is another another way of us seeing and uh, um, understanding what faith is, the evidence of things not seen. Um, we know that the I use the I'll use the sun for an example. We know that the that the sun is going to, as they say, rise every morning, and we know the sun is there. We've seen it. We know it's going to rise, but we don't know. We don't know how it happens. We just know that it comes up every morning and goes down every evening. Um, now you know we're not going to get into any science or anything like that. Uh, I don't have that kind of that kind of knowledge to go into that kind of depth. But I do know that by faith. We know that the sun is going to rise. Um, verse number two says that for by it, the elders obtained a good report. Uh, the elders being those, those old patriarchs from the, from the Old Testament that, that, and this is what this, 
this chapter deals with is the, the, the Old Testament patriarchs that believe God by faith, and they didn't even have the Holy Ghost. But we know that by uh, by what they went through and what they had experienced, uh, they have obtained a good report from God, and they have they have experienced some things to know that uh, God will do things by faith, by faith. Did you ever stop to wonder or even realize that it took faith? It took faith for us to get the Holy Ghost. It took faith for us to get the Holy Ghost. It also takes faith, faith for us to maintain the Holy Ghost, to, to know that God is going to uh, uh, keep us saved. It does not give us a uh, carte blanche to just do whatever we want to do, but it, uh, it helps us to understand um, that God is able to keep us if we want to be kept by faith, by faith. And I, I guess, you know, a lot of questions come up. I know in my mind sometimes, and as much as uh, uh, where uh, faith is concerned, um, you know, we we being spiritual beings, we do have questions and we, we wonder about certain things. I know for myself, you know, certain questions come up that I will think about, for example, uh, how do I know that I'm going to heaven? How do I know that God actually saved me? Okay. The evidence in my salvation is there. Speaking in tongues is the evidence. And I want to interject too that speaking in tongues, and I'm not going to get off track here, but it's just a, a thing I want to say here. Speaking in tongues is not designed for God. It's designed for us because God allows us or has allowed us to speak in tongues um, that we can hear it for ourselves and know that we have salvation. It is the evidence. It is the evidence that God is inside of us. Now, as we continue to walk with God, we have to maintain a faith that God will keep us. It's almost like, it's almost like a marriage, if you will. We're in this thing for better, for worse, for sickness or in health for the good parts and not the so good parts. So we have to maintain that God is going to keep us saved. I don't care what we go through. Now, the, now the, the adversary, the enemy is going to test that. He certainly is going to test that. But we have to believe that God is going to be able to keep us even, even on the battlefield, even in the battlegrounds of, of life's experiences, God is going to keep us by faith. All right, so um, verse three, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So God framed the worlds, he just spoke the word and bam, things happened. Things came into being. And the scripture is saying that uh, things which are uh, so that the things which are seen, the things that we see in the physical world, didn't have anything to, um, uh, they were not made of things which, which do appear. All right. In other words, what we see and what, and, and, and what we are able to see within this physical world, um, didn't, it didn't have, uh, uh, anything to do with making itself. Let me break it down a little bit more. We had nothing to do with our coming into this world, but God ordained it. And here we are. I have nothing to do. I had nothing to do with uh, anyone else in this world or, or had anything to do with anybody being in this world. Um, 
only God was able to do that. And in as much as what God has done, we can't take the credit. There's nothing that can take the credit for what God has framed by his word. Okay, so the things that the things that we see had nothing to do with itself being here. It had nothing to do with bringing itself into being or into fruition. So by faith, verse four, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Now this particular scripture, it really is, is uh, referencing how even though Cain killed Abel, it's really referencing how by faith, uh, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice, which showed his heart. He did the he gave he gave God his best. By faith, he knew that God would would accept his sacrifice even though God didn't specifically didn't get specific about how much to give or how to give it or anything like that. Now, if we look at it in terms as us, in terms of us today, by faith, we hope that God would, would accept what we do for him based, based on our willingness, based on our attitude in doing something, for the Lord, and that really doesn't have anything to do with our brothers and sisters and what they're doing. See, what happens with us is that we start looking at the next person like Cain did with his brother. And a lot of times individuals will get jealous. Individuals will say, you didn't have to do all of that. Individuals can be intimidated. Insecurities can start to surface. Whereas God has not made this a competition. He's made it to where, and as, as, as God ex, uh, basically expressed to, to Abel, asked him, well, why are you upset that I accepted your brother's sacrifice? Why are you upset about that? In other words, he was telling he was telling Abel, and he tells us even today that it doesn't. It, you know, he he gives us an opportunity to do as good as anybody else. Um, and when I when I say do as good, again, it's, I'm not talking about competition, and I'm not talking about brownie points or any of that kind of stuff. I'm just talking about rising to the occasion, even in the small things. What are you talking about? Being on time, giving your tithes and your offering. You know, if you've been, if you're asked to be at a certain place, at a, uh, be at a certain program, be there, you know, those types of things. And uh, I'm not saying that you won't run into problems or challenges with individuals because that's going to always be, because we're, we're going to always be rubbing shoulders and elbows with one another. But I'm saying that, in as much as we do a thing, we do a thing for God by faith, and we do it as unto the Lord, not as unto me or another brother or sister. So faith plays a plays a big part, even in even in the little things. And, and you you know, God counts it as righteousness. I don't care if it's a, if it's a big job or a small job. If it's done with the right heart. By faith, we know God will accept it, and God will count that as righteousness, just like He He counted uh, um, He counted Abraham's Abraham's faith as righteousness, um, which is found in Romans four and three. He talks about it, and um, and He uh, was able to uh, please God, even in pleasing God. It take it's it's an act of faith, even in pleasing God. So it you know so really what I'm saying is is that we don't we don't have anybody to please but God. We don't have to 
You don't have to get into all of that other stuff, isms and schisms. Uh, you are in this thing for yourself. Yeah, you love your wife, you love your husband, you love your children, and you love one another. But at the end of the day, it's about what you do for God and what and 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 uh, the attitude that we have in that work for God. Now. That that's up to us how we want to how we want to be you know how we want to act how we want to respond. All right, so um, chap, chapter eleven deals with the elders that obtained a good report. You know Abraham, Noah, and all all of these individuals, um, and it skips it skips over. Just a second, I want to. I want to pull up. Let's see. Give me one second. Thanks for your patience. All right. Let's see, here we go. Um, it skipped over verses five and six in this chapter, and I want to read it said, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So faith is vitally important in order to please God. As a matter of fact, as it states here, it's impossible to please him without faith. I'm going to ask the question too, and we all know the answer. Is faith and belief the same thing, or at least go hand in hand? And I say yes. So without faith, it's impossible to please to please him. And the the operative word in this scripture, or one of the operative words, one of the other operative words in the scripture, for he that come to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that. Diligently seek, diligently seek him. So the belief and the faith works hand in hand. No belief, no faith. No faith, no belief. And it doesn't take much faith because the Bible speaks about having the, uh, uh, faith the size of a grain of mustard seed is all it takes. And that's a very, very small amount. So really what this is telling me is that any presence of faith will please God. It's how much, it's how much faith we can, uh, or let me put it this way. It's how much, it's how long we can hold on to that faith over a period of time when we go through a test or when we have a job to do for God. It, 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 it measures our strength and what kind of spiritual chops we have with God. Now, God is not trying to, you know, um, ask us to flex our, spiritual muscles and, you know, uh, try to, you know, put on a show or anything like that. Not at all. But things in life come to challenge us. And I'm going to tell you now, it's going to take faith to get us through these things. I've, and, and I think that everyone that's listening has been through at least one test and your faith has been tried at least one time enough to know what I'm talking about excuse me, and over a, over a period of life, of uh, a lifetime, over the period of a lifetime as being saved uh, or even not being saved, your faith will be tried. I thank God for, for uh, the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost will give us strength to make it. And, the, and he, he's, you know, the Lord says that um, he will, uh, um, that he will strengthen us 
and uh, that in all things we can do uh, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. So that's a faith operation. Um, faith will sustain us. And I, I really, I really know that because again, I've been through some things that I know it was God that kept me because, because I felt like I wasn't going to make it. I really did. Give me one second. I'm trying to. There were times when I really didn't think I was going to make it. And I, I really felt like giving up. I, I tell people all the time, I gave, I gave up on God about eight times. And I say, well, but I'm going to tell you something. This is this faith thing. If it's cultivated right, and if your mind is wrapped around it right, it will not let you give up. Because the times I said I'm done, the Holy Ghost got a hold of me and said, "Not so. It's not going to happen." It has a lot to do with your love for God. It has a lot to do with your reverence for God. And it has a lot to do with that cross that Jesus died on. Because when you think about that, it sets your mind right. What I had to look at was my attitude. See, faith has nothing to do with wrong attitudes. Faith has nothing to do with giving up or giving out. Faith says to go, go forward anyway. Leaning on God, looking to God who is able to keep us from falling, keeping ourselves on the right track as we do, as we continue to walk with God. Any questions so far? Comments? All right, we'll keep going forward. Um, let me get back to my scripture here. So we've just talked about how it's impossible to please God without faith. So by faith, Abraham in verse eight, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. Now, this is where a lot of saints will throw faith out the window, and it gets back to an attitude, and it's this. When it's something we really don't want to do, okay, we will not do it to its to uh we won't do it as unto the lord if we do it at all we'll get upset or we'll half do it and that won't please god but we have to keep things in focus we have to keep things in its right perspective because we will throw we will decide that we don't want to do something and we won't do it and that's not faith. That's attitude. That's flesh. By faith, we should be able to keep our flesh together when we have to enter into a position that we don't want to be in or when we find ourselves in a challenging situation. By faith, you got to tell you almost have to talk to yourself because the devil is on one side battering at your at your brain about what you have to do and that you can't do it coupled by you don't want to do it or you do want to do it and you're not qualified to do it or whatever it could be but you have to continue to go on because you know that on the other side if God told you to do it then by faith he's going to help you go through all the way does that make sense 
That's what I've always been told. And it seemed, and it has always seemed, well, it not seemed, it always worked. Where the challenge comes in, and we don't even have to put the enemy in it, challenge comes in is with our own way of thinking. We interject our thoughts, you know. You know, well, I don't know why he asked me, you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, you know, whatever. But see, that's the attitude. So let's look look back at the scripture here. Uh, so Abraham, he was called to go into a place which he should have to receive the inheritance. And he wasn't even he didn't he didn't even know where he was going, but God told him to go and he went. Um verse 17, by faith, Abraham again, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up uh his only begotten son. Um now I've heard that I've heard two things about this. The point here uh, being that when Isaac or when Abraham went to offer up Isaac as a sacrifice, I've heard it said that Abraham did it without any any resistance. Then the other the other side of the coin was that it was something that he didn't really, that he, 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 he just, it was hard for him to do, but he did it anyway by faith. So, you know, I think that faith, I think that faith will help us on two sides of the coin. I think it will help us to, <laughs> To make a situation or to make a challenging situation easier, if you will, or if it's not easy, then it can it can help us in our minds to get to a place to where we can go ahead and do it for God. God will put us in situations that will try our faith, as I was saying earlier. God will try your faith. Um, three Hebrew boys. You know, you think all through the Bible, there's faith all through the Bible, individuals that that all they had was faith. It's Samson and uh even Sarah had, you know, she she had to get to a place to to where uh once she knew God wasn't wasn't playing, that she had to get to a place to where she had to know that uh, by faith that God was strengthening her body to hold a child. Sarah, Samson, uh David. David facing Goliath, you talk about a challenge. Now, his faith was intact, but through his experiences, it helped to galvanize that faith enough for him to face that challenge. See, he didn't let down um, uh, with the small things that God uh, used in his life to bring him into the knowledge of what true faith can do and what that was all about. So that when he got to Goliath, Goliath was big, but that was all. As they, used to, as they say in the world, you tall and that's all, you know, and he put him down. So we have, we have these challenges and our faith is going to be tried. Another question to ask that, that we can ponder. Um, what if God does not, what if we have, what if we have faith that God, for God to do something and it doesn't happen. Does that make, does that mean it's not faith? I don't think it, I don't think it means that at all. I just think that it's, it, it, it all depends on God's, on God's timing. It all depends on what God uh, uh, has decreed or declared even before we were even born. It may not have, it may not be uh, for us to have that in our lives or to have that 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 thing or whatever it may be uh to come to fruition you know you know on a comical side it's it's like you know somebody wishing for new uh wishing for new york <laughs> you know and by faith I'm believing God for new york but, but for what you know that, that it doesn't make sense some things that some things that that human beings you know, or believing God for really doesn't make sense. 
and it's you know uh, we have we have to keep keep things within a realm of sensibility, uh, you know, and and understand how how faith works, you know. Uh, I have I have faith that God is going to give me a million dollars, but I'm not handling my paycheck from week to week properly. You know, now that's not to say that he won't, you know, but if we continue to do it over a lifetime, you know, time starts to run out and by faith, you still, you know, which is okay, you know, I mean, but my God, we have to be realistic. Now, the ultimate act of faith, y'all, in my estimation is getting to heaven the heaven part of this wall. That's the part that we're looking at, the rapture, all of those things that have nothing to do with houses or land or, or what we think or how we feel. But the ultimate objective is to get, is to, get to where our true home is. We are just passing through this place and we're just doing by faith what it takes to live and to make it through the power of the Holy Ghost and to be where Jesus is one day. Now, we've got to conclude, we have to conclude that there are certain things we've got to do in order to do that, in order to reach that goal. One of them is to keep our faith intact, not to get mad, not to let down, not to quit all the time, you know, not to uh, uh, be afraid all the time, uh, whatever it could be, you know. So that's that's our that's our ultimate our ultimate goal in faith uh, as being uh, saints of God, being Holy Ghost filled, the baptized in Jesus' name, tongue talking ones. We have that to look forward to. Um, let's go back to our word here. <clears throat> um, Let's look at verse 20. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau con concerning things to come. Uh, by faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph uh, and worshiped, leaning upon the tip of his staff. And by faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. As we get, we even have to have faith that, that when we die, that God is going to raise us up, go down corruptible. He's going to raise us incorruptible. By faith, we have to go all the way through whether God takes us by the grave or by the rapture. We have to maintain that faith and good standing. Otherwise, couple of things you won't make it the other thing is is that you're wasting your time we don't want to waste our time i've been in this what going on 43 years that's not to say that i'm i'm more saved than anybody else not at all but i'm just saying i would hate to see 40 43 years go down the drain because my faith wasn't intact or I was, I'm complaining all the time. By faith, don't you know by faith, you even even before you give a single dime in the church, <laughs> by faith, you have, to, you have to believe that it's going to the church. You know, and I'm using that as just, just kind of an off-the-wall example about faith, but it can get down to, it, it, get, it can get down to that in our giving. You know, by faith, there's so many things by faith that we do that we don't even count them all the time. You know, thinking about uh, uh, things and, and faith keeps us keeps us sane in the Holy Ghost. I mean, come on, you know, when you think about it, uh, the things that the things that people worry about that have that don't have God. We don't have to worry about because faith is helping us to surf right over certain things by faith. 
We don't, we don't have to, we don't have to be fearful about certain things. Faith keeps us, keeps us, uh, uh, it, it keeps us secure and it keeps us on board and on top of things. Um, yeah, you have low times, but see, by faith, we know that God is going to bring us up and you know that it is for, it is for our good. All things work together to them that, uh, that all things do work together for the good for those who are called, who are the called according to his purpose. And that's, that's who we are. All right. Um, okay. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the King's commandments. Um, by faith, we have to understand and believe that we are in the right thing. We have to believe by faith that Jesus, he, he came to this earth, he died, he, and he resurrected, and that he sent back the comforter, and that we are a part of his plan. We have to believe that in order to stay, in order to stay within uh, within the, the realms of faith and in pleasing God. Again, um, we don't have to worry about certain things because of the faith factor in our lives. We don't have to worry about not making it unless we make it a worry. We don't have to worry about um of uh, being being um left out in the cold because we don't have the truth you know you got a lot of individuals that that uh proclaim they proclaim salvation but they're denying the power thereof they don't really have it and that's not a criticism but that's 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 just an observation in that people are, 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 are a lot of times get, the devil will fool individuals and make them believe that their faith is intact and it's for the wrong thing. And it's not in the right, uh, it's not uh, within, uh, it's not uh, compartmentalized, right? It's not in the right place. And um, you have to do it like the Bible says. We have to do it the way God said it. And by faith, I remember when I was when I was witness to my former pastor, he he witnessed to me and it was like him speaking Greek to me. But I, I heard enough to understand that I, mm, I got to make a change here. OK, I, I heard enough to believe what he said. I didn't know. I didn't know what in the world, you know, he was talking about, but all I could hear was. And it was the Lord speaking, just do what he said, do. Do what he said, do. And I asked the Lord, I said, okay, if what, if what you say is true, then help me to stop doing something. I had a vice. I said, help me to stop doing it until I can get baptized. And, then I'll, and, and I will, if you know, for the next five days, the end of five days, I was laying it on God. I said, at the end of the five days, I'm in. <laughs> you know, God did that. So by faith, I went in and I got baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. And um, the rest is history. But my faith was, it, it was, it was, it wasn't so much that that I, I I had to be convinced on one side. I was I was partially convinced. But on the other hand, I knew that I, just, I knew I needed to do this, but I didn't want to mess up and get in something crazy. My wife had already gotten the Holy Ghost. She got the Holy Ghost a week before I did, and it um, it was it was something. But but I had to by by faith. I had to in in my own way. I had to have faith in order to um, be saved, and it. You know, and God honored that honored that faith. So here we are, and, and and I'm sure we all have our story. 
Um, all right. So Moses, of course, Moses was was a child. He they're not talking about his faith. They're talking about the faith about the faith of his parents, uh, because um, the uh, Pharaoh. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Moses uh, was hidden, was hidden by his parents. Um, and, and by faith, God was able to protect Moses from Pharaoh because Pharaoh had commanded that all these firstborn children would be, should, would be killed. And uh, and it, it did it did happen, but Moses was was hidden. And again, this is another sign or another example, rather, of God honoring your faith. We haven't talked so much about that, but God honoring your faith. God honored the faith of Moses' parents enough to where the child was protected, and even Moses' mother ended up raising her own son right there in Pharaoh's house. All right. Um, verse 32. And what shall I say more for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon. So they're talking about others in the Bible. Uh, some of these old patriarchs. Uh, it would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. Now, let me let me say this, that, you know, those, back in those, in the old, in the Old Testament, there were experiences that people had with God that, that seemed to be if I can put it this way, seemed to be a lot harder to deal with because they had no Holy Ghost. They had to really, they had to really believe that God was, see, God did a lot of outward showing, you know, splitting the Red Sea and dividing the Red Sea and, you know, uh, killing the giant with one stone, you know, all these types of things, water from rocks, you know, all these types of things. Um, so with us today, it's more, it's more of a spiritual thing in as much as our, uh, now God will show us things on, it will show man things on the outside, but there are a lot of things that go on, on the, on the in, inside the minds of people that, that God, that only God can, can, can reach and that God can deal with. Uh, we have uh, times when in, 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 uh, the modern modern day times that we have to really deal with the mental because that's where the battlefield is. That's where our warfare is. It's spiritual and it's and, and the battlefield is in our minds. And it takes faith to fight those battles. First thing the enemy will tell you is that you 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 know you by yourself and that you can't you can't um, you can't fight you can't make it. Uh, so, you know, where is your God? And, you know, you know, all the things that the enemy can try to tell us when we're in challenging situations. And, um, that's where we have to really gird up the loins of our minds. And we have to stand, uh, against the, the trickery of the devil as it talks about in Ephesians six, but, uh, we have to, we have to really stand our ground in, in these days and times. Any questions? I know I'm doing a lot of talking. Just a comment. Yes, sir. You thought I wasn't here. <laughs> I did not. I saw your name. <laughs> All right. You know, when, when I look at this, and it's, it's, it's so amazing. You're doing a, an excellent job, needless to say. Thank but you, when I, I look at this, it's um, you talk about faith. You got to talk about hope. You talk about things you see, things you don't see, and it's it's one thing lead to another, and when you 
he brought in the verse that said, it, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. So you got to have faith to, to please God. So you can, you, when you think back, Cain wasn't trying to please God. Right. You look at Abel, he did stuff hoping to please God. So when you talk about faith and hope, if our hope is to get a bigger car, get a bigger house, that's the wrong hope. Our hope got to be to please God. And faith is the action that demonstrates that we're trying to please God. So, you, so it, it's, it's so connected together that we, we lose sight. We believe that there is a God, but do we want to please him? Okay. And, and, and so if you could talk about the, that connection, hope and faith, we can hope for a better life, but how does that please God? Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, I think that this faith, this faith thing is personal. Um, I think that it's, it really, you know, it, uh, when it boils down to it is, you know, what are we doing with that faith or, or, or how are we res responding uh, to God? Um, when God does something uh, really, really does something for us that, that blesses us or delivers us from certain things, how do we respond? Do we, are we going to, you know, are, are we by faith, are we going to uh, be ready for the next thing that comes and and are and are we going or are we going to respond by not responding and not being being grateful? You know, uh, where does that heighten our hope, or do we get negative all of a sudden? You know, so there are a lot of questions, and I really do think that faith is uh, it boils down to a personal thing. I really do. That's a good comment. Thank you, thank you, Brother Strong. Anyone else? All right, all right. Well, I don't have a whole lot more, but I will say that it took it took faith for me to teach this Sunday school lesson. <laughs> and I'm just that time. Well, let me tell you, I do have a testimony in that regard, Dr. Crook. When the Lord saved me, I had a nervous condition. Couldn't speak in front of people. All right. So <laughs> call me into the ministry. Be that as it is. My point is, is that after 43, well, he called me, he called me. I've been I've been preaching for 41 years, more or less, mostly less, but it's okay. Um, but I've taught a lot of Sunday school lessons and did a lot of speaking in front of people just in general. And it was not, it was not in me to do that, but by faith, he's brought me this far so I can at least, you know, do what I'm doing now. But it, it, it's a, it's a real testimony. It really is. So, you know, by, by if I had not the faith that, that God was actually wanting me to preach, I wouldn't have done it. There was no indication. I had no. I didn't even have a mop. I didn't have a cell in my body that said preach. But then God said preach. You know. I said, well, okay, God. You know. So I took it to my pastor, and he said, well, let's give it a couple of years, or a year, and here I am. So by faith, uh, and, and and I'm still using faith. Because I still wonder why God, why God, you know, called me <laughs> sometimes to do this. I can do other things a lot better, I think. But you know, that's 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 just my carnal thinking, and I think our carnal thinking can get in the way of of our faith walk with God, and and we diminishes we diminish our hopes that uh, Brother Strong was talking about. You know, uh, they go hand in hand, and we diminish the, the hope that we have that blessed hope that we have in God and we miss out on what God really has for us sometimes. 
you know, so we have to think in those terms and we have to think about it almost daily because anytime, see, we as people, we want to, we, we got to, we, we complain if it, if it goes the way we want it to go, or we complain if it doesn't go the way that we want it to go, but we have to choose which one we want to do. If we do something, um, uh, that God wants us to do, let's do it as unto God, because we don't want to be found like, we don't want to be found like, um, uh, Cain, you know, not doing his best. Not at all. Any other questions? All right, all right, all right. Dr. Crook, that's all I have tonight. And um, I, I appreciate the opportunity. I'm just trying to help out. Uh, thank you, Elder Lewis. Excellent job. And I can relate to what you're saying. My sister always say, uh, that's not true of Pat. But I am a very introverted person. Uh, my nature is uh, quiet. In the church, no one's probably seeing that now. But God had to help me to get there. And my brother-in-law, Elder Reeves, would say, I would say, I'm so, I'm, I'm so afraid. I don't want to get up there. And then he said to me, where are you supposed to be? You're doing this as unto the Lord. He will help you. So, and I think many of us have had those experiences, but you cannot tell just like when you were teaching tonight. I got so much out of the lesson, just the new Amen. thing about thinking related attitude with, with faith. So thank you so much for what you're doing. Amen. And all of the teachers, I just look forward to coming to this class. I love it. <laughs> Amen. Well, keep praying for me, Dr. Crook, and um, everybody on this panel. Keep praying for me. I'm, if you can't think of anybody else to pray for, pray for me. I'm always standing in the need of prayer. All right. Well, do you want me to close out with prayer, Dr. Crook? Uh, yes, yes. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for the word of life, and we thank you for uh, the ways that you've made for us, and Lord, how you have strengthened us even in our faith. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you will continue to be with us as we leave uh, this Zoom call, Lord, that you leave, and we leave not your presence, Lord, but that you would help us, oh God, and bring us back together at your appointed time. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, everybody. Love you. Oh, are there any announcements that anyone has? Uh, keep the Dunlap family in the prayer as they buried their eye on this week. And uh, Sister Lois Dunlap. And the funeral is going to be at Mount Calvary in Madison. And the viewing is at 10 and the service is at 11. Yes. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you, everybody. Love you. God bless you. Yeah. Have a good one. You're better, Sister Marcy.